Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on our WPTV Facebook page. I am Stephanie Suskind. Glad to have you with us right now. And joining us is Janine Fan, and she is a licensed professional counselor. Mm -hmm. And Janine, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. So what we're going to talk about today is really the mental toll of COVID-19, especially on our kids. And Janine, you work with kids, teenagers, adults, and we've all really been impacted by COVID, not only people with their health, but mentally as well. So tell us a little bit about in your practice, kind of what you've seen, especially in that younger population when it comes to how COVID is impacting them. Um, well, I do. I, I think I had a client who was four years old and um, it's kind of hard to do telehealth when they're that young, but it was play therapy. And um, her mom had just kind of expressed that she wasn't dealing with the um, the virtual learning so well. She was having a hard time, you know, sitting down and focusing, which is really, really understandable for someone that young to have to participate in school um, online. But basically, you know, just kind of you know, with, with that with that age group, like four or five, six, is really just, you know, metaphorical play. And sometimes there will be losses, um, you know, played out um, in the play therapy. I do have quite a few teenagers um, that I see as well. And I think what the difference is with, like, the teens versus the, the kids is that the teens are um, – they're mourning the loss of kind of just like the rites of passage with that come with high school. Like yeah. there was a lot of that with the graduations and um, prom, things like that. Um, with kids, you know, from like seven to 12, I would say that age group actually is thriving more than any other wow. group because that's a, I, I don't want to say awkward, but a very tender age developmentally. Um, yeah. And so it's kind of nice for personally, a lot of my clients that they don't have to, you know, get up every morning really early and, you know, worry about what they're going to wear. And it's sometimes social things are, they're kind of like, that's the age group, I would say seven to 12. That's kind of not having the hardest time. Um, that being said, like, I think right now, since it's been over a year with the quarantine, a majority of my teenagers are like really lonely. They're just, yeah. they're really missing their friends. They're happy that the vaccinations are becoming available. But they're just, um, you know, really feeling alone, feeling like they are like really it's like claustrophobic a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you work with um, teenagers? We'll talk about that age group first when, you know, they are kind of mourning the loss of, of these rites of passage, the graduation, the you know, prom, things like that. How how do you work with them? What what do you tell them to kind of um, reassure them through this time? Um, well, I really want to emphasize that, like, all their feelings are valid. Like, this is a huge loss for them, and it's okay to be really upset. And some clients would say, you know, I feel guilty. There's bigger problems than this. But, you know, it's about being being able to be kind to yourself and how you treat yourself. And, like, this is a loss. I mean, you yeah. didn't know this was going to happen. Um, lots of things, you know, hormones are flooding at that age. Some of the things that it's already hard you know being a teenager is yeah. not easy it's yeah it's, um and in a lot of ways it's like you know kind of just reflect back to them how brave they're being by just like coming to therapy first of all because it's yeah. a very, very healthy thing to do but um there's still a stigma around it sometimes so just idealizing you know what they're doing and and letting them know that you know whatever feelings they have like it's all it's all a loss you know there's a part of it's just not understanding it's like a different new feeling yeah so it's really just in and yeah it's a very big transition period that no one saw coming but really just hearing them you know exploring their experience with them processing their feelings and we just had a really interesting comment um from one of our facebook viewers and we appreciate you joining the conversation with us and he was talking about how much uh he's a college student how the transition to um to you know virtual was difficult for his social life, but saying going back in person, he thinks is going to be just as difficult with anxiety. And I think that's mm -hmm. kind of the phase that we're starting to get into here in the next couple of months. You know, here, uh, our, our school districts are starting to announce that they're moving to in-person uh, learning for next year. So you're going to have a lot of kids going back right. to this environment that they really haven't been in for a long time. 
Yeah, it's going to be just as much of a, a huge transition. And it's also, you know, anxiety about the virus. There's going to be probably different levels of comfortability. And it's just kind of, um, yeah, it's another huge change. It's, it's not, you know, on a small scale. It's like we've really, this quarantine lasted way longer than anyone expected. And it's, it's it becomes familiar. It really does. And so um, even just like picturing yourself being in that, you know, really social environment can be really daunting and it's really understandable it's something that um is to be expected but it will you know be a problem for a lot of people so as a parent how do you reassure your kids you know that that they're like you said their feelings are valid but you know kind of taking that next step into um you know kind of our our next phase of new normal um yeah, it's just kind of saying like, it's really good to hear how you feel about it. It's really mm -hmm. good to to be able to, however you feel, just to not, you know, feel like it's something you have to hide. Um, and, you know, to talk about it, to talk to friends, to, to talk to everyone about just because everyone's dealing with the same feelings. Mm -hmm. And it's important to just really, you know, um, let them know that they they're important and they're heard and it's not no one's going to expect anything specific from them they just have to you know do it in their own way yeah and i think um you know that's that's something to keep in mind you know that that everybody is experiencing this together uh, even though their reactions and specifics could be a little bit different you know we're all this is new for everyone and we just had another comment from one of our uh, viewers and thank you for your comment and she said that you know especially for younger kids they're they're kind of growing up in this environment that you know almost in an antisocial way, you know, you're being taught, okay, well, we don't, you know, we don't touch other people. We don't, you know, we keep our distance and, and that could be something else to overcome, uh, especially with younger people, younger kids. Yeah. Especially, you know, when they're at that really impression, impressionistic age, two to three, and it's, it's seeming to be a bad thing to be around others and to not have a mask. And that's a good question. It's like, um, you know, I think they're able to bounce back at that yeah. age yeah. i mean it will be a transition like i said but it's um you know it's kind of just psychoeducation like this was a period of time where this was important but things are changing just to be really you know honest mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know it, it will maybe seem weird but it's also just something that you know isn't always going to feel this way yeah yeah i know i have a two-year-old and you know we'll be out somewhere and and he you know he doesn't know boundaries and he doesn't know you know and he runs up everybody and he's a little social butterfly and so you know as a parent you kind of have to keep those things in mind too like okay well you know you don't know someone else's comfort level and you know mm -hmm. just kind of gauging how people um behave yeah. and how they are out in public and um you know it's it's a lot to to keep in mind yeah, it makes the already hard job of parenting just a little bit more <laughs> intricate. It's like, yeah. you know, um, I mean, they're they're so young. Hopefully, people will be able to to deal with it if it does happen. But as far as like teaching such a young child like about that, I mean, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. It's, it's right. really just kind of just trying your best. So it's yeah. about doing your best, and not trying to be too critical of anything that happens. But yeah, and if there are things that are you know seem to be. A worry to a parent like oh no am i doing this right or wrong it's just you know it's really i think it's really good to model the behavior to kids to say well um i thought this but this is actually true or like i, I tried this but this might have been better for you just being really able to be very vulnerable about it yeah and um if parents are noticing um certain attributes in their kids you know things that are unusual maybe they're more withdrawn or um what should they do or what are some signs they should look for to indicate that maybe their kid is having a, a tougher time um i would say if if you really notice a behavioral change as far as like you know becoming more more and more isolated um not showing any interest in things that normally would you know um, bring the person joy just kind of very subtle things but also just checking in with them that's the best way to know um just asking like how are you feeling because i think therapy has been so important during this time and it's been um it's been really impressive to see how many people have embraced it as a way to take care of oneself and i think um you know if you notice your your child is 
is acting really different or seeming to be more, you know, private and um, irritable. It's definitely signs of anxiety and depression, um, and it would be, you know, good to address that. And what are some of the ways to kind of have that conversation, you know, with your child? Because that can be a, a real difficult uh, conversation for a parent. Um, I would say, you know, just check in with them and say, I've been really thinking about all the feelings I'm feeling and wondering how you are because you're important to me and your your perception is probably a lot different. And since I've been feeling a certain way, I wondered about how you're feeling. Just kind of really, you know, normalizing it and making it um, something that's, you know, just more familiar to them. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, you mentioned how beneficial the therapy can be. Have you, in your practice, did you see a big increase uh, during the yeah. pandemic? Yeah, definitely did. It's been very busy. We have a long wait list. Yeah, I can imagine. But like you said, that's good to see that people are seeking out help in these situations. Yeah, I think it's it's great. And it's become, I don't want to say it's become the, the, the normal thing, but I've just, it's been more of an open conversation now to be like, like, it's almost like you're not in therapy. Like a lot of more people are, yeah. you, know, you know, becoming to, to the realization that like, it's just as important as physical health. And right. it's really, it's really hard to get through things um, in general in life. So sometimes, you know, just having a place to reflect on things and, um, you know, talk about being, you know, in a pandemic um, in 2021 with all of the things going on, you know, yeah. um, it's just, it's just something that I think it's, it's really, it's not like a COVID's a good thing at all, but it's a, it was a time when I noticed, you know, people really saying life is really hard. Let's try to get some help with this. Like we deserve. Yeah. Kind of removing that stigma a little bit and, and making it okay to, to ask yeah. for help and to get that guidance that you may need. Yeah. Okay. Not to be okay. Yeah, exactly. I know we've, we've kind of heard that phrase a lot, but it, it is, <laughs> and, yeah. and it, you know, when you think about what that really means, it's, it's very valuable. Um, do you see any type of long-term um, mental health impacts, especially on, you know, uh, that most impressionable age and our, our younger people? Are there certain things you think, you know, we kind of need to look out for when it comes to their mental health um, down the road because of all of this? Yeah, I think depending on, you know, each individual situation, there could be, you know, some, some P PTSD, you know, whether they know someone that had COVID or, um, you know, they witnessed something or experienced their own loss. Um, just just knowing that, like, there there could be, you know, some future stressors and anxieties that could trigger, you know, flashbacks of something. I mean, this is a traumatic time. There's been so much trauma happening, um, not only for the people on the front lines, but just any individual really just suffering any kind of loss, um, just to be aware that there's, you know, this this isn't going to just go away once once everyone's, you know, um, vaccinated. It's going to be kind of one of those things that will kind of stick with us. And it's just going to be something, honestly, that's, you know, unprecedented. We'll just have to kind of see. Yeah, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot more that we learn over, you know, the next couple of years and, you know, even the next couple of months as we move out of this and kind of see how, how everyone transitions into uh, the next the next phase. Right. Anything else that you think it's important um, to get across or that, that you want parents to know about this time? Um, I think it's, well, yeah, I think it's important to, if you're having any behavioral difficulties with your child regarding, um, you know, virtual learning or just having been stuck in the house for the majority of a year and a half or not a year and a half, a year, um, to, to just kind of not try to be perfect, not try to, you know, don't worry so much because it's it's happening and it's not, you know, a testament to your parenting if the child's having a hard time. This is a really hard environment and to just really, um, you know, try to be kind to yourself. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, that goes for everybody. You know, we're all yeah. trying to, to balance everything and to keep all keep the train on the tracks and, you know, it's challenging. I mean, I think even now a lot of people that I, you know, a lot of my clients, they're just, um, they're wanting so badly to just feel normal and they, they're really tired of this and it's, it's yeah, almost yeah. like 
there's a guilt about it. Um, right. There's just so many different emotions. Um, and, you know, that's really divided some families because of the way that people have, you know, reacted to handling the risk. And it's just yeah. that that could be another thing that, you know, could potentially be some wounds that would need to heal in the future. It's just kind of like those kind of familial um, conflicts too. Yeah, I think, and um, with the vaccines, I think we're going to see that, you know, just as much, you know, when you have family members, you know, who, who may not be comfortable getting vaccinated and then someone doesn't want to be with them if they're not vaccinated, you know. Right, I mean, so it could still last into the future. Just yeah, like, whole new layer. Ever... Yeah, that's so never ending. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hopefully someday, but. Yeah, uh, well, we really appreciate your perspective. Um, any, any other tips, anything else um, for parents if, you know, they have a teenager maybe who's really, really bummed out about missing out on, you know, whatever milestone it is, anything that um, they could do for their for their child to kind of, you know. Um, I mean, I would say just try to get outside as much as possible. Try to, you know, see if they want any help in arranging whatever kind of social environment would be comfortable for them to do um, and check in and see if they're, you know, if they're really more withdrawn and really seeming to be having a hard time, kind of assess assess where they are because, you know, um, there's risk involved when you have to, like depression and it's situational and there's so many changes to just really, you know, I would say don't try to cheer up because that's pain soothing, but, you know, try to try to say, like we're all in this together, like I said, and uh, things aren't going to always be this way. It's really yeah. kind of the important thing, and it's it's been a time to be strong, and everyone's made it. Like there's people, you know, that have struggled so hard to be proud of themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point too. You know, be proud of yourself for for being where we are, and you know. Yeah, no one was ready for this. No right. One knows them, so. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, Janine, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your perspective. And, and I think this was a really valuable conversation to really uh, help our community as we all go through this together. Yeah. Thanks for having me.